Hello and welcome to Lismore City Town Hall, the home of the Northern Rivers Performing Arts. As you can see, this is the place where, where it all happens as far as entertainment goes. Haven't been to the theatre for a little while, so it's good to be back here. We might get back to that a little bit later because theatre actually, coincidentally, just happens to coincide with some of the theory we're looking at today. I want us to consider three different theoretical perspectives as we consider deviance and deviance and the body. We have Foucault, a postmodernist, Goffman, a symbolic interactionist, and then feminist perspectives. So three different ways of considering the body, three different insights or three different perspectives to give us insight into the body, deviance, and social control. Firstly, Foucault. Foucault developed the idea of biopower, that there is power that has influence over our biology as well. He saw the body as the site of social control, but it's not just where social control takes place, it's where discipline is applied and responded to, so that we conform to, the, uh, to social norms, or it's also the site of where there is resistance against social norms which would be termed deviance. He identified that there are different ways in which the body is disciplined. So there are modern means that he identified, things like um, processes of hygiene, of health, and um, of reproduction. So very important um, in the way that we adopt regular daily practices to ensure that our bodies conform. And so there's this concept of the docile body. Now, you will be pleased to know that I am presenting today with my docile body. I am not presenting um, myself in my natural form. Be very pleased about that. But I'm here, I've washed, I've showered, I've dressed, I've cleaned my teeth. I smell like a summer breeze. In many ways, conforming to the standards of society, and especially if I'm going to go up the stairs here and sit, uh, sit in the theatre, then, then there, are, there are expectations of me, and so I will present my docile body, and then I'm going to go to the row number that's appointed to me, find my seat, and sit there, and sit there mostly in silence while I listen to the performance. Again, there are processes by which my body is disciplined so that the societal functions around me will continue. I will be part of it, but with my body disciplined, quiet, not standing out, just being part of what is taking place there. So Foucault had a lot of things to say um, about the docile body and about the site of social action. Goffman took, a, Goffman took quite a different approach. He developed his, dramatolo <laughs> that's a terrible word. his dramaturgical approach to understanding what was happening. He used the, the idea of the theatre. You've got a stage that the, that the person comes onto and presents a performance. The performance is viewed by an audience who interacts with the performer. So there is some measure of feedback that is given to the one who is performing. But the performer just doesn't have the, the front stage on which to stand and which to perform. There is also the backstage. He used this as an idea to say, when we're in the front stage, we, we are in our social environment. This is where we are presenting ourselves socially. This is where we're saying, this is who I am in this social context with you as my audience. And we will perform in a certain way. We'll present ourselves in a certain way. We may use certain props so as to, to show the self that we want presented in a particular social context. Alternatively, we might go to the backstage. That's where we can be by ourselves. That's where we don't have to engage in this performativity, but we can simply be with ourselves. Now, it might be that we are also backstage with others who know us well, but at that point, we don't have to, we don't have to put on the act. We can be ourselves with others, but that's a very special relationship that's being expressed there. 
So we have this performativity. And when we are performing, there may be things that we are aware of about ourselves that, yeah, they're not actually going to go over so well with the audience. So we will manage our performance, manage the, the way that the audience responds to us. If there are things about us that we know will be stigmatized in this particular social setting, then there are some things that we might do about it. One of the things is we will, we might try to cover it up, we might try to hide it. You think of um, stories of people who can't read and rather than admit to being illiterate, they will find their way through it or they'll pretend or they'll get around it some way. But so as they don't reveal themselves as being illiterate. The same would be said for uh, someone who is gay but engages in uh, delivering queer jokes so as not to flag that he himself is gay in that particular social setting. So hiding the stigma is one way that we might go about it. A second way is we might go and do some repair work on that stigma. So if the stigma relates to, say, some sort of deformity that we have, then hey, cosmetic surgery. It might be that there are other ways that we, we will change the way that our body is presented so that we are able to be in that performative front stage position without the judgment coming back on us. Gee, there's a whole beauty industry built up around that sort of concept. When we come to feminist theories, Feminists also have a lot to say about uh, the way that bodies are presented. Now, the particular focus of feminism is the way that women's bodies are, are disciplined, are subjugated and controlled, and particularly by a patriarchal system. And their perspective is very much on how men control women's bodies. They understand that women's bodies are, are subjectified in so many different ways. With, uh, the female body is considered and controlled because it's seen as perhaps being a sexual object for the gratification of men. Or maybe it's some, it's, uh, in some ways the body is the property of a man. It's also the case that women would be seen perhaps as being reduced to just their reproductive roles. So a woman is there to produce babies and raise children. So in all these different ways women's bodies are being controlled, they're being subjectified, and women are needing to conform. There is also this idea of feminine ideals. Now, theorists will say there is no special feminist ideal. And as we look around different cultures too, we see that what is ideal in one culture will not be the same as in another culture. And through time periods, those different ideals would change as well. But there are, there are ideals, and women would see that these are largely constructed by the patriarchal system that requires that their bodies conform. What does that mean to conform? It might mean things like um, not being hairy, presenting yourself as beautiful, making sure that your hair is in place. The deviants, the ones who aren't conforming to these feminist ideals, are those who've got the hairy armpits, who smell funny, who went and got themselves pregnant. They're the ones who are overweight and eh. Feminist perspectives help to shine a light on the way that the system, the, the gendered system in which we live, affects the way that women's bodies are viewed. And when the feminist ideals are internalized, it also reveals the way that the women themselves respond to those ideals and to the social controls that are placed upon them. We've considered briefly three different theoretical perspectives, Foucault's, Goffman's and feminism. I suggest that you go into some more reading. It's quite fascinating the insights that they develop and they develop insights that can be applied to a whole range of situations. A simple application would be the way that Goffman talks about uh, the theatre and the front and backstage. Gee, sounds a bit like having an identity on, on the internet. 
how do you present yourself socially on the internet? When you are thinking about yourself going into a social setting, what are the ideals that you try to conform to, consciously or unconsciously? Hope you enjoy learning more about these perspectives and what they say about us, social controls and deviancy. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh.